Okay. Well, I've been getting kind of bored of Tokyo recently and it's kind of my summer holiday right now. So, I've decided to travel for a couple of hours on a coach to get away and I've come to a very rural spot in Japan. This is Kawaguchiko. I've been seeing this anime character all over the station and was wondering who it is. Her name is Takami Kawaguchiko and this is actually the mascot for the area, which is interesting because most prefectures or even cities in Japan have a mascot, but usually there's some chibi, like cartoonishy character, but this one's actually a full-blown anime character. Maybe there's some story and lore behind her. I'm looking forward to learning if there is, but I think it's really cool. I hope I get to see more. Time to go explore. An awesome Tordi gate. If you happen to be unlucky like me and the weather is terrible and there's no view of Mount Fuji, then something you can consider doing is visiting one of the three famous caves. Behind me is the ice cave, but there's also a wind cave and a bat cave. Nothing to do with Batman. I assume it's just a lot of bats. That's not my sort of thing, but I think the ice cave is going to be really cool. So let's go check it out. Oh my God, I've just stepped down and it's already so cold. Like the temperature just instantly drops. It is quite low in here and it's really wet and dripping as well so like, whoa, dangerous <laughs> yeah as he says it's very cold down here but actually for me it's nice it's hot outside <laughs> <laughs> well, I am really ducking down low to get through these caves. I thought it would be a leisurely stroll, but <laughs> yeah, this is this is really low. But one thing that's interesting is these are naturally formed caves made by the eruptions of Mount Fuji and the lava solidifying. So everything about this is completely natural, but I guess they carved the steps and put in these handrails. Which is a good thing, otherwise I'd probably be dead right now. Woo. Okay, got through that. Yeah, so here we are. I think we've reached the main attraction of the cave, which is this mass of ice. One thing that's really cool is that even in the middle of summer, like now, the ice barely melts. And this actually used to be used to preserve things like seeds and silkworm eggs a hundred years ago. And from this point, it's back to the surface. I wonder what's so dangerous about it. Maybe that pole's got some history too. A dark history. I see the light. I'm kind of out of breath. And oh my God, that humidity has just slapped me in the face like a wet fish. And I don't know if you can see it, but my glasses are completely steamed up in a second. I literally can't see anything. But that was fun. 
Honestly, it doesn't take that long. I definitely recommend it. The only thing to worry about is that the buses are really rare here. It's very countryside, so there's only three buses a day, I think. So if you do want to come here, then you need to have your time management down. Here I am at my hotel, finally arrived. And that's great because arguably one of the best parts of any vacation is the hotel room. I'm actually staying in Kawaguchi Ko for three nights. So I've booked three different hotel rooms with three different prices. So you can see what kind of room you can get for your money in this area. This hotel that I'm staying at tonight is Fuji no Yado Ohashi, which if you translate directly means Fuji Hotel Bridge. That's because it's right next to Lake Kawakuchi Bridge. But tonight I've actually splashed out and got the expensive hotel. I'll tell you more about it in a minute. Let's first go and check it out. Okay, so maybe you're thinking that the hotel room was quite expensive, which it definitely is. But it does also come with a dinner and breakfast set. So right now I'm at dinner and look at all of this. It's very fancy and very delicious. I'm not even too sure what all of this is, but I know that that's a slab full of crab. And that makes me so excited. I can't wait to dig into this. And in this, I assume, is Yamanashi's local dish, which is hotto. Wow, more food just keeps coming. That's not it. I thought this was everything, but... Arigato gozaimasu. Oh my God. What is this? Sashimi. What a good selection of it too. Oh, and I guess the hot oil is ready. It's bubbling good. Oh my god, even more has turned up. And <laughs> you got the design mask. And you got the design mask. So he lit this and it's been a while because I've been so busy eating everything but it's time to put this steak on. Oh such a beautiful sound. This beef is actually kudobe wagyu beef which is really good stuff. So I've got green tea, water, wine, hotto, steak, rice, edamame, noodles, sashimi, crab, tempura, whelk, the roll things, some egg. It's too much, but this steak looks pretty much done. Oh my God, that is good stuff. Mmm. Honestly, that kudoge beef was so good. Oh, he's back. A kind of peach soup, I guess. Oh, it's, mm. oh very sweet, very delicious. But what's really cool is that Yamanashi is famous for uh, three ingredients in particular, which is grapes, pumpkin, and peach. And in this meal, I've had all three of those. 
So I've had the pumpkin in the hoto, I've had peach with the dessert and the grapes with the wine. So all around, well done, very good themed meal. I've enjoyed this so much. Oh, almost finished, almost. I've only got a few items left. But it's so nice to have this whole room to ourselves. You know what, I saved myself a sip of wine to congratulate myself. And while this is sweet, it's not going to be as sweet as going to enjoy my beautiful hotel room, have a bath, look out into the night sky and drink my Fuji beer. Okay, time to open the beer. Okay. Now I think because it's Fuji beer, it's going to be blue. If the shop was to be believed, or oh, it is. I poured this like an amateur. Ugh. I don't think I like this. <laughs> it tastes weird. It looks weird and it tastes weird. It's the taste of Mount Fuji. I need to enjoy this while I can because I've only rented this expensive room for one night. So for sure, I'm gonna be staying in this bar for a long time and also using it in the morning. Even though today I couldn't see a good view of Mount Fuji, at nighttime, the sky's kind of cleared. I still can't see Mount Fuji, but what I can see is just as interesting. There's a trail of lights going into the sky. And this is clearly nighttime hikers traveling up Mount Fuji wearing headlights. But a lot of people do this. They hike up Mount Fuji for the night so that they can sleep at the top and see the summit during a beautiful sunrise. That light's not for me though. I would rather watch the summit from the comfort of my own private bath. And what a life it is. Wow. So the loud banging you can hear is fireworks and that's because later on today there is a fireworks festival which is actually the real reason why I've come to Kawaguchi Ko on this particular time of the year. But for right now we're going to do one of the most uh, must do things in Kawaguchi Ko and that's to take the Fuji panoramic ropeway or better known as Kachikachi Yama ropeway. Let's go. Wow, the weather has become unexpectedly beautiful. I'm very lucky. And in the distance, you can just see the tip of Mount Fuji. On a clear day, you get the most beautiful scene here. And that is the highlight of why most people will come up to Kachikachiyama. It's a ropeway up and down if you want. You can also hike it, but at the top, it's just a 10 minute hike around to see everything. However, I think it's best enjoyed if you know a little bit of Japanese culture. So Kachikachiyama, it's actually famous for a monogatari that's named after it. Monogatari means folktale in Japanese. And it's about a rabbit, a tanuki, and an old man. So let me tell you the story of Kachikachiyama. Story time. <laughs> Nothing, I'm stuck at this. Side to side, there you go. The story is actually kind of a dark story, but it goes like this. One day, long, long ago, there was an old man who was a farmer who lived in the middle of nowhere with his wife. They befriended a rabbit who they treated like their own daughter. Every now and then, 
There was a pesky tanuki who would come down from the mountain to steal the farmer's pumpkins. One day the old man had had enough and caught the tanuki. He tied him up whilst his wife was cooking and fought to kill and eat the tanuki later. When the farmer left for town, the tanuki begged the wife, please let me go, please let me go. If you let me go, I will help you cook something that only a tanuki can make. The wife foolishly agreed to cut the tanuki down, but he played a devilish trick. He killed the wife and cooked a stew using the wife's flesh, using its shape-shifting abilities. That's right, tanuki have abilities in this story. He turned into the farmer's wife, and when the farmer came back, fed the stew to the farmer. After the farmer had finished eating, it transformed back into its original form and mocked the farmer for eating its own wife before running away. The farmer was distraught, crying, and then the rabbit turned up. Seeing the despair of the farmer, it swore revenge against the tanuki. The rabbit was smart and she decided to make a plan to get revenge for the old man. She laid in wait for the tanuki and as he walked by said, ah, oh, if only someone strong and handsome could help me with all of this firewood. The tanuki decided to show off and said, ah, no problem, hoisted all of the timber onto its back and said, let's go, come with me. As they walked off, the rabbit pulled out its flint and set the timber on fire. As the tanuki couldn't see, it could only hear the sound of crackling wood and said, eh, what's that sound? The rabbit said, oh, that's just Kachi Kachi Yama. It always happens around this part. In the end, the fire burned all the way down and singed the tanuki's back. The next day, the rabbit prepared some soybean paste mixed with salt and chili peppers and all sorts of nasty stuff and visited the tanuki and said, I've made some medicine to heal your wounds. She rubbed it into the tanuki's back and of course, it didn't help at all. It just burned and caused the tanuki extreme pain. He said, ah, it hurts. And she's very smart. So she said, ah, that's how you know it's working. The next day, the rabbit invited the tanuki out fishing. And this was the final part of her master plan. She built two boats, one out of wood and one out of mud and told the tanuki, take the mud boat. When he questioned why, she said, well, it's dark brown and so are you. Well, oh, he agreed with this because he's kind of an idiot. She said, we need to sail deep into the lake to catch the biggest fish. So they sailed away. As they did, the tanuki's boat started to dissolve and he screamed for help. Oh, save me, save me. This is when the rabbit revealed her loyalty to the old man and struck the tanuki around the head and struck the boat to sink. And he sunk to the bottom of the lake and died. Then the rabbit went back to the old man and told him of her revenge. And the old man was happy. That's the end of the story of Kachikachiyama and the end of my journey up Kachikachiyama as this is the peak. So there's nothing left to do but to pray to the gods with five yen. The hike itself actually wasn't that long, maybe 15, 20 minutes in total. A little bit extra, including recording time. Yeah, I'm definitely back because there's a really nice kind of like samurai Edo period style. I don't know what it is, just a little area. And it's also got an observation deck, so you can go up the top and get a really nice panoramic view. Yeah, even though it's a bit overcast, a bit foggy in the distance, this is such a nice view. Oh, you can even see Mount Fuji a little bit. It's come out to play. Just the tip. <laughs> Just the tip. But you know, when you're as big as Mount Fuji, just the tip is probably enough. Well, it's time to go back, but not before. Wow, that was loud. Oh, 
Oh, the weather is really taking a turn for the worse. Super cloudy and windy now. I finally made it back to the hotel and just as well because I'm quite tired after trekking around. Well, I kind of blew my budget for the hotels yesterday with the luxury room. So today I'm going for a more budget friendly option. No private bathtub, no Mount Fuji view, just a standard Japanese room. But instead of being 46,000 yen, it's only 11,000. So let's go and have a look what it's like. I actually haven't seen the hotel room yet. And well, there seems to be more guests tonight too. Okay. Oh, it looks quite nice already different so straight away we have our bathroom pretty standard bath and shower and in this room we're going to have our <laughs> toilet but you know what it's an electric toilet still so you know still got that bidet need that and in here yeah we got a very standard Japanese room We've still got the futons the table, oh, air con, just what I need. And well, a very nice view. I do need to relax though and freshen myself up. So lacking a private bath, this hotel actually has an onsen. So it's a public onsen, but anyone can go and enjoy it. And it's absolutely free as long as you're a hotel guest, which of course I am. So. I'm going to go put on a yukata and go visit the onsen. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm fresh out the onsen and if you think what I'm wearing looks a little bit like Japanese pajamas then actually you'd be pretty correct. This is a Jinbei which is a kind of casual style thing worn by men, women and children in Japan. Usually people would only wear this to go outside the house very quickly or maybe to an onsen or something like that but it's a perfectly acceptable replacement for yukata, which people can wear in the summertime to go to things like fireworks festivals, which is exactly what I'm about to do now. And part of the reason why I've come to Kawaguchi Ko. So let's go. All the roads have been closed off, so I've had to walk to the festival myself, which is fine. It's only like 15 minutes from the hotel and it's already just so much fun, so vibrant and also quite busy. I need to find a place to view the fireworks from. It's so busy that it might be quite difficult to do that, but definitely one of the best parts about any summer festival is the street food. So I'm looking forward to going to find something to eat. Uh, this is the spot. This is where all the street food is. And I'm particularly looking for a few different things. Takoyaki, yakisoba, and maybe some karaage. It's always a good time. Oh, well, yakisoba's right here. But this won't be the only store. There are loads of places we can go. So I'm going to have a look around first. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, the fireworks have started. I haven't exactly found a good spot I'm standing, but I don't really care because from here, it looks so nice. So I'm just gonna stand and eat everything I've got. Ooh, first is karaage. Oh my God, so good. Ooh. And this is just the beginning. It's only going to get better from here. Finally managed to find a spot. Got the picnic blanket down and the fireworks are starting to get good. Just taking a break. So it's time to get comfortable and dig in. I'm going to start off this part with my Yuta. The cow. This one's actually on the lake. Fireworks just keep getting bigger and grander, and we're only halfway through. And I've got takoyaki. It's bright and early in the morning and I had to rush to get out the hotel. Unfortunately, it's still really overcast, so there's no chance to see Mount Fuji today, but that's okay. On a day like today, there's something perfect. If we come to the station and travel for just two minutes to Fuji Yoshida, there's an amazing theme park called Fuji Q Highland. So let's go and check it out. Okay, I've just got into the entrance and it's quite a spontaneous trip, but I'm glad I came because actually, <laughs> wow, actually it's free to enter, but you can get an all day pass, which is 5,000 yen, or you can pay for rides individually, which ranges from 800 yen and the biggest ride I think is 2,000 yen, but you can enter for free. So let's take a look around, see if we're interested and yeah, maybe check out some of the rides. Oh, I've had a really great time walking around Fuji Q. Super interesting. There's some really big rides. Unfortunately, it's starting to rain, so I'm going to go find some shelter. Oh, but I really fancy a smoke. Ah. 
no smoking. And they're gonna thank me for my cooperation. Kawaii. I didn't know they had this here actually, but walking around Fuji Q, it's raining, but I just found something so cool. No way I'm winning this one. I'm actually trying to break it, she's not moving. She looks cool, even if she is the most useless character in anime. So I've got free shit again. And I guess I've just got to try to get them in here. Oh, air from here. This looks impossible, but I've got to throw the Shiduken from here into these holes. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, difficult. I won't make a very good ninja. I'm a third rate ninja. Oh, but now I want to try the frogs. It just looks so much fun. Frog. On. Oh, okay. Big hit. Big hit. <laughs> I really said him flying. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's so much fun, but uh, I couldn't help but put my full power into it. I sent those frogs flying. And the only other game here is the Oritimaru ball game. <laughs> Looks fun, but I don't think I'll win at that one either. It's raining and they've got ramen here. It is about lunchtime, so maybe we need to go for some ramen. Here I am in Ichiraku and the ramen's arrived and I've ordered a Naruto special and the Sasuke special. Itadakimasu. <laughs> Let's go. I'm excited to eat this. It's a bit big for lunch, but you know, I had to get the big one. Mm. Oh, that is really good. That is really good. And it's so cool that they've got different prints on their eggs. Super runny. The egg is delicious and it's definitely been marinated in soy sauce. It's got that kind of deep taste to it. And it's super runny, so I'm a happy boy. Well, that was a lot of fun. A really good unexpected surprise. But it's time to get out of Fuji Q and go to somewhere where I can smoke in peace without getting tanked. Well, if high octane puke inducing roller coasters and long running shonen ninja anime culture isn't quite your thing, then Kawaguchi Ko has several different museums that showcase traditional Japanese art and culture. So let's go and have a look. The walk to this museum is so cool. Just a trail, very small trail for a forest with waterfalls and a pond with different koi in it. This is really nice. I mean, look at this. It's 
So this is the first museum I've come to visit. This is the Kobota Ichiku Museum. And just the building's really cool. It's made from Okinawan limestone and coral. Well, we don't have long before it closes, so let's just get in there and have a look what it's all about. This museum showcases artwork by a man named Kobota Ichiku, who spent his life recreating and reviving a lost art of dying kimono called Sugiga Hana. But it actually doesn't take that long to experience this museum, or should I say art gallery, because it's quite small, but what there is to see is really amazing. I'm usually not the sort of person to enjoy going around museums that much. And especially when I thought about Daid's kimono, I wasn't that excited. However, this was actually really impressive. It wasn't just Daid kimono, it's basically painting art. I can't really explain it, but I would absolutely recommend you come and see it for yourself. I have a whole new appreciation for this type of dying technique. It's really great. But yeah, everything's closed now, including all the museums. So I'm going to have to visit the rest of them tomorrow. For now, it's time to go to the new hotel room. So I'm just heading to my hotel room now and I've decided to go for something a bit more different. Instead of a traditional hotel room, I've gone with panoramic glamping. And the price is about 16,000 yen. So in the middle and instead of a hotel room, it's actually a camper like this. Yeah, overall, overall it's decent. The shower's a nice size, the toilet's good, got the bidet, we got the big double bed, we got the microwave, combini food, and the touch of luxury in this is really that we've got a projection screen on the wall, so that's pretty cool, and we can hook up our own devices onto it, and the sofa, big sofa, and a footrest, and a table. Come on, this is great for the price, 16,000 yen. And as a bonus, there's also barbecues outside. You have to bring your own food and pay a small fee for it. I think it's like 2,000 yen to use the barbecue. They provide everything. You don't have to clean anything, that's great. And the reason it's called panoramic view is because on a clear day, unlike today, you can have a clear shot at Mount Fuji and it's really nice, uh, just like the projection screen. Yeah, pretty cool. Hopefully I get to see that in the morning. But unfortunately the weather forecast says it's gonna be rainy. Oh my God, but it's okay. For now, time to relax. Oh my God, that's me. That is me. We are Oh, what am I doing? There's a double bed. Oh my God, that's nice. The sofa is just as comfortable though. Well, it's another early morning and still quite overcast. Mount Fuji's being a bit shy and the weather forecast says it's going to rain all day. I've been quite unlucky on this trip so far in that regard, but it's okay, I've still got a few hours of sunlight. So while I have the chance, I've come to one of the amazing scenes in Kawaguchi, which is Kawaguchi Asama Shrine. So let's go and have a look. The entrance to this place is amazing. This is actually one of 1,300 approximately Asama shrines across Japan that worship the deities of the mountains, particularly Mount Fuji, whose deity is Konohana Sakuya Hime, the cherry blossom princess. But this one's even more special because it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it's a bit of a climb to the top, but 
if you get there, there's something really special to see. I'm actually not sure what this is, but it's a very decorated horse. I feel like I should pay my respects. Thank you, horse. It's even got carrots down there. So one thing that's particularly noteworthy about this shrine in this area is its giant cedar trees. But there are seven in particular that are thought to be over 1,200 years old. These trees have these ropes tied around them called Shime Nawa. And well, you really have to come here to appreciate for yourself just how tall they are. It's really quite special. Okay, I finally made it to the real peak and it's about 20 minutes to the top and it was more exhausting than I expected. I'm kind of soaked through, but well, here we are and we have to first pay 100 yen and then come through here. So the reason we come here is mostly just for a photo opportunity. And this is it. This is the reason why we hiked all the way to the top. So if it's a clear day, then this has a really beautiful view of Mount Fuji. And the only reason you'd climb up here is really to get this photo opportunity. Of course, today, and like the rest of my vacation here, no Mount Fuji. It's just completely overcast. So if it's a day like today, is it really worth the hike up here? Honestly, probably not. But if Mount Fuji was there, then absolutely. So I guess that's all there is to see. Time to go back down to the bottom. Ah, but on the way here, I did find something kind of interesting. Actually, not kind of interesting, super interesting. It was a monkey theater. So that's something I need to go and see. I love monkeys. Here we are at the monkey theatre. I've got my tickets, so it's time for some monkey magic. Some happy monkey magic. no idea what to expect but well this looks fun That was so much fun. It was about 40 minutes long, but it felt much quicker. And uh, the guy was super friendly, even to foreign people. He couldn't really speak much English, but he was still really genki towards me. And if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you can actually get a bit of a discount and they give you some free food to feed to the other monkeys. So let's go. This monkey's hungry. He's waiting for his corn. I know how you feel. Oh, there's loads of monkeys. There's a baby monkey. Okay, this baby monkey definitely wants 
whatever this is. <laughs> Cute. Oh, he, he wants more. He wants his cucumber. So other than subscribing, you can also get the food for 100 yen. I really love monkeys, so I wanted to feed them a little bit more. Here you go, monkey. And off he goes. I've got a little bit more, and this monkey knows it. <laughs> Cucumber with some corn topping. Okay, well, I fed the monkeys, I've seen the monkeys. So let's get out of here. I shouldn't keep these. Well, here I am. This was a last minute booking and this hotel cost about 12,000 yen. But it looks very nice, actually more than adequate. Of course, it's a Japanese style room. And as you can see, there's no bed, not even a futon. But don't worry, there is a place to sleep. Usually in this style of hotel, you just have to make your own futon. So yeah, everything we need is right here. But what's also very exciting is that this hotel has onsen. After such a long day hiking and visiting museums and just a week in general, I can't wait to go jump in an onsen again. So yeah, yukata time. And I assume they're in here. There they are. This is what I need. <laughs> time for the onsen. I'm just chilling in the outdoor onsen and it's a beautiful morning. Still a little bit cloudy, but the sky is clear and blue. Ah, beautiful day. Ah, I forgot to mention the name of this hotel. This is the Yamagishi Ryokan. And overall, really nice. The interior is super cool. It's got loads of Japanese statues and artwork and also a souvenir shop. The onsens are really good. The room was clean, very comfortable. So very nice. But because it's such a nice day, it's time to move on to the last stop of the trip, or maybe two which is the Chudeto Pagoda. I really hope I can see Mount Fuji today. Here it is. So I've made it to the entrance of Arakuda Fuji Sengen Jinja or Sengen Shrine. It looks kind of small, kind of cute. So I'm gonna check this out first before going to the pagoda because we have to trek up the mountainside it looks like. So yeah, let's see what this has to offer.
Well, that was pretty cute. Didn't take too long. You can see everything in about five minutes. So now it's time for the trek up the mountain to go see the pagoda and hopefully Mount Fuji. There's actually two ways you can go up this. One is a kind of road, I guess. And the other is just steps. I'm taking the steps, but there are so many. I can barely even see the end. So the winding road definitely the more scenic route and it does lead to the top. The steps definitely the direct route and more labor intensive route. I kind of regret this decision, but finally I've made it to the top. Wow, here we are, the five story pagoda. I'm so tired from climbing the steps, I can't even speak properly. This looks beautiful, but to get the best view, we need to climb up just a little bit more to a kind of raised platform where you can get the perfect photo op. So there's two ways up to the observation deck. One is by a path and the other is by steps. I've had enough of steps, but on the pathway, it's really nice because you get this awesome view overlooking the village. Still out of breath though, but it looks so nice. I finally made it. It's a nice sunny day and this is a really nice scene. The observation deck's a little bit busy. And Mount Fuji's being just that little bit shy, but if I can wait, maybe, maybe the clouds will move. I hope, hope and pray. But actually, this is the most of Mount Fuji I've seen so far. So maybe if I wait just a little bit, those clouds will move and I'll get that perfect scenic shot. I just need to wait, hope, pray and be patient. Well, I've been waiting here a couple of hours now and it's just getting worse. The clouds are moving in the wrong direction. I did get to see the summit at one point, which was nice, but I think it's time to call it a day. It's still beautiful weather and I still have some time before I need to get my bus back home. So I'm going to go and do the one thing I should have done whilst in Kawaguchiko and that's go and enjoy Lake Kawaguchi before I need to get my bus. Ah, uh, this is so nice. I find myself on the middle of some random dock in Lake Kawaguchi, but the nature is just supreme. There are ducks swimming around, people fishing. It's peaceful, there's nobody here. But if you do want to do something a bit more touristy, then just 15 minutes walk to the other side of Ohashi, the bridge. You can take ferry rides, speed boats, and even swan paddle boats, if that's your kind of thing. For me, I think the best thing to do is just take in the view. So I've decided to go on the ferry. Don't know if you can call it a ferry, but this type of boat, it looks cool. It's a 20 minute round trip of the lake so you can get the best views. And actually on the way here, I saw that Mount Fuji was in full view. 
no clouds. So I'm really hoping I can get that final magical view on this boat. It's the last chance. And off we go, sailing into Kawaguchi Lake. Ah, oh, Mount Fuji's coming in the distance, I can see it. Is that it? Okay, that's not actually Mount Fuji, it's too small. I got excited. I prematurely excited all over the boat. Wow, this is so good, it's finally happened. It's taken this long, so many journeys. But a boat in the middle of Lake Kawaguchi and we have this amazing view of Mount Fuji. Everybody's so friendly and I can see why this is a happy occasion. Finally, five days, four nights in Kawaguchi Ko and I can get this beautiful unobstructed view of Mount Fuji. I thought it was never going to happen, but here it is. What a wonderful end to my vacation. That ferry trip was so good. I'm so happy that I managed to see Mount Fuji for the first time in my life, not just on this vacation. Actually, that was the last ferry. Everything's shut now. This is a really rural area. But I guess that also means that the day's coming to an end and sadly, I have to leave Kawaguchiko. But tell me, what was your favorite place that I visited so far? And also, which hotel do you think was the best? For me, definitely the first hotel, Fuji no Yado or Hashi. Not just because of the big fancy room, even in the basic Japanese room, the staff really took care of us and the onsen was so nice. And as for my favorite place, mm, Chireto Pagoda was really nice, especially if it was a clear day. But honestly, you can't beat this ferry ride. I would go on it again in a heartbeat, but yeah, sadly, time to go. Like and subscribe.